Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are talking about the cost of metal shingles. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel and welcome to this Stamped Metal Roofing Series. I've got Todd Miller from Isaiah Industries. Todd, thanks again for being here, really appreciate it. Thank you, my pleasure. So today we're talking about cost right. and cost of a couple different uh, metal shingle options. So we're gonna take a look at Adam's house and if you remember, we've already done a cost video that talks about exposed fastener and standing seam, a couple profiles of standing seam roofing for Adam's house. Today we're gonna take a look at a couple options for metal shingles. So I'm gonna turn it over to Todd and Adam and they're gonna run over some options. So Todd, thanks for letting me come into your facility today. Um, as you may or may not know, I've been looking for some sort of roofing solution for the better part of two years now or so. But um, really wanted to go through and see what you guys had to offer from the stamp metal shingle uh, point of view and, and see how that stacks up. Well, we've talked some about some of the benefits um, and some of the different variety of products that are out there uh, in terms of stamped products. Um, one of the things, of course, people always ask about is cost, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's a logical question. And we find out a lot of different things drive people in terms of their decision and, and what they care about. And, um, you know, metal roofing just offers this huge variety of options and different price points and different benefits depending upon what the homeowner wants to accomplish. So one of the products that we looked at for your house um, here is, is uh, a steel shingle. This is our Castlewood product, uh, which is a gorgeous product. And you know, it's got one of the fancier paint finishes that has, you know, multitude of colors and yeah. some variation and things. Um, so on, on your house, which, you know, is, is a fairly average size house in terms of homes that we typically work with, oh. this would probably cost the homeowner someplace around $35,000. Um, again, could and be that's, some that's a ballpark variety. installed price. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be a little less, could be a little more, but that's kind of a good round number based upon yeah. on your particular house. Um, then here on my left is another product of ours, which is our Country Manor Shake, which is an aluminum product. Um, this product also has that higher end Thermobond powder PVDF coating on it as well for a little extra character and variety and different things. Um, this product probably installed on a home like yours uh, would probably run something more in the range of about $50,000 would, would be yeah. the expected cost. Um, so it gives a couple of clear option price points for consumers to consider. And uh, we so often find, so so we always ask homeowners on our warranty, um, what, what made you choose a metal roof? And typically when they fill out the warranty, I mean, they'll say things like durability and, and things like that. But if you actually talk to a homeowner after the roof is up, they just say, I love the way it looks. Yeah. It changed my home dramatically and turned my home into a real showstopper in my neighborhood. Yeah. And so, you know, two options here, different price points, but still both offer some tremendous character and, and looks and beauty. Yeah, and, and what I really like about both of these is they are two truly distinct uh, styles, you know, but both of them are going to be painted metal, you know, whether it's steel or aluminum. You know, you get the, the PVDF finish, which is, you know, if, if you've known anything about the Metal Roofing Channel, we are partial to PVDF. What contributes to the cost of this and what contributes that to, to the cost of that one? you know, being, you know, a little bit more than this one. Sure, good good question. So a couple things going on there, as you mentioned, they both have the PVDF finish, which yeah. is top of the line coating. Um, when you get into your metals, steel is a little less expensive or mm -hmm. less costly option than aluminum. Uh, so the aluminum products tend to be a little more higher cost. Yeah. Um, this also does have the higher end finish, so it, it is on the high end of steel products as well. And is that because it's a print pattern? And, right. And, yeah, I mean, this is cool. I mean, you, I don't know if you can see the shadow lines here almost, but you have two distinct patterns. This is a single piece of steel. So this isn't just, you know, a bunch of pieces of steel assembled together, stitched together. This is a continuous piece. So right. totally understand the custom nature of this product, you know, understanding the, the painted metal world. Yeah, there's actually three different colors of paint that are applied on there in separate steps and separate stages in the coil coating process to, mm -hmm. to, to achieve that look at the end. 
Um, and the aluminum product also over here has uh, one of our higher end paint finishes on it with the powder PVDF. Yeah. You know, when you look at the stamp products, though, one of the things that we do find in terms of cost comparison of different products, the lower profile products, so I call this lower profile because the bottom edge thickness is someplace around a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Yeah. This product, on the other hand, is what I call high profile because that bottom edge thickness is about an inch and a quarter. These products do take more time to install yeah. because your ha everything you have to do flashing wise has to allow for that extra thickness. And so part of what builds up the cost on this also is the labor involved okay. in, in dealing with the higher profile. So something like this, let's say I said, hey, I don't want you know, no frills, no, mm -hmm. no textured coating, no multi, you know, sure. different paint system or print pattern. Say I just wanted something solid, but I wanted to go with that look. Is that going to drive the price down more? It, it will. Um, okay. So generally speaking on both of these products, because of the higher grade finish option, that's probably adding about $5,000 to the okay. price of the finished product Gotcha. Uh, because of the finish option. So if you go back to a standard color, then that goes away. Okay. So Todd, this is going to be, you know, a lifetime roof for my family and I. So that's one of the big appeals to this. You know, what is this going to look like compared to a shingle roof that, you know, if I'm going to be in my house for 30 years, you know, how many times am I going to have to replace that, you know, twelve to eighteen thousand dollar asphalt shingle roof compared to this? Sure. Good question. And we hear that a lot from homeowners because typically the metal roofing customer is saying, hey, I'm gonna stay in this house for yeah. forever. Um, so, so typically how long that asphalt shingle la may last really can be driven a lot by the quality of the shingle. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, all homeowners, whenever they their asphalt shingle doesn't last, they say, well, I must've got a bad batch. Uh, there aren't as many bad batches out there as people think, but yes, sometimes there are bad batches that affect the life as well. Um, and of course, where you live has a pretty big impact as well. So uh, we'll see down in the southern states, I'll see a, a very high end fiberglass shingle um, that's shot after five to seven years. Yeah. Now that same and high end. And that's low end or is that high end? That's low end in okay. terms of life expectancy. Now that same higher end fiberglass shingle may up north may last 15 years or okay. may even last 20 years. So the elements are what really works sure. on those products. Anytime you have any installation at a southern exposure or an upper altitude with high UV, that yeah. really burns the oils out of it fairly quickly. And the oils are what give them life. So ultimately, you know, homeowners figure, okay, if I, if I spend maybe two to three times as much uh, on a metal roof now, mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna stay in that house at least 20 years, that gets me at least to the point of where I would be putting another asphalt shingle on. Okay. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is how much roofing prices in general are driving upward all the time and especially with the short labor market um, we're seeing labor have a huge impact on the cost of installed roofing. Yeah so so in 15 years when I got to replace that that 12 to 18 thousand dollar shingle roof might be more like 17 to 23. Possibly you know, more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, Okay, so that's a great point. Now, I really only have one more question. So I live in an HOA and my homeowners association says no metal, you know, just strict rules. They're, they've got this preconceived notion that it's going to be a bright tin looking industrial mm -hmm. uh, type of roof. If I'm a homeowner, how do I get your product specified? Do you have any tips or anything that I should do to go to my HOA and say, hey, I, I want a long-term product. I plan on living here for a long time. You know, any ideas on how somebody, a homeowner could approach their HOA? Sure. A lot of times seeing is believing. So mm -hmm. you're right. They have preconceived notions of what that metal roof is going to look like. I'm going to say, I don't want that. But ultimately the HOA is there to help preserve property values and, and the beauty and, and the aesthetics of the neighborhood and the community. Yeah. So if you can get them out to see some of these products where they start to say, oh, that's a metal roof. That's not what I thought it was. Yeah. That usually is what turns the tide. Um, likewise, there's companies like, like yours and, and mine that are happy to come in and talk with HOAs and present to them and kind of walk them through that process and that evolution of metal roofing so that they understand that, you know, as they say, this, this ain't my grandpa's metal roof. Um, you know, they've, they've really changed and come a long way. Yeah. And a lot of that has been in terms of aesthetics and the value that it brings to communities. 
Okay. Well, Todd, thank you for your time today. I thank feel you. like I'm a step closer to making my roofing decision. So thank you again. I think one important point to remember here is there's going to be a range uh, depending on region, uh, choice of profile, type of metal roofing as we've seen. There's going to be a lot of different options, but you know what? That's a good thing for a homeowner. In my opinion, Absolutely. I think you'll agree with me. Um, there's a lot of different options for you to choose from, but I think the important thing is make sure you find a great contractor to work with. Make sure they're using a great supplier. Thanks for watching, Todd. Thank you very much. And thanks to Adam as well. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.